Let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. My sisters and brothers, let us open our minds and our hearts to God's limitless mercy and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Amen. You come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Amen. You will come again in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy on all of us, forgive us our sins, and bring all of us to everlasting life. Amen. Together, let us pray. O God, who show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path, give all who for the faith they profess are accounted Christians the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ, and to strive after all that it does it, does it honor. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. Moses, hearing the voice of the Lord from the burning bush, said to him, when I go to the children of Israel and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you, if they ask me, what is his name? What am I to tell them? God replied, I am who am. Then he added, this is what she shall tell the children of Israel. I am sent me to you. God spoke further to Moses. Thus shall you say to the children of Israel, the Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever. This is my title for all generations. Go and assemble the elders of Israel and tell them, the Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob has appeared to me and said, I am concerned about you and about the way you are being treated in Egypt. So I have decided to lead you out of the misery of Egypt into the land of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hevites, and Jezebites, a land flowing with milk and honey. Thus they shall heed your message. Then you and the elders of Israel shall go to the king of Egypt and say to him, The Lord, the God of the Hebrews, has sent us word. Permit us then to go a three days journey in the desert, that we may offer sacrifice to the Lord our God. Yet I know that the king of Egypt will not allow you to go unless he is forced. I will stretch out my hand, therefore, and smite Egypt by doing all kinds of wondrous deeds there. After that, he will send you away. The word of the Lord. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. Give thanks to the Lord, invoke his name, make known among the nations of his deeds. We call the wondrous deeds that he has wrought, his portents and judgments he has uttered. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. He remembers forever his covenant, which he made binding for a thousand generations, which he entered into with Abraham and by his oath to Isaac. He greatly increases his people and made them stronger than their foes, whose hearts he changed so that they hated his people and dwelt deceitfully with his servants. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. 
he sent Moses, his servant, Aaron, whom he had chosen. They wrought his signs among them and wonders in the land of Ham. Alleluia, alleluia. Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest, says the Lord. Sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said, Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart, and you will find rest for yourselves. For my yoke is easy and my burden light. The Gospel of the Lord. Is the burden light, being a disciple of Jesus? It is when it goes our way, but sometimes it's not necessarily God's way. We've been reading Exodus over these days that I've been with you, and who would have thought that Moses would have been the one invited to lead the people of Israel. As we recognize that when he encountered an Egyptian fighting against a Hebrew, he killed him. And then the next day, he goes out and two Hebrews are fighting and Moses' credibility is attacked because we know what you did and you're trying to exhort us And yet, in yesterday's story of the burning bush, it's God calling on Moses to lead the people of Israel. It's amazing, sisters and brothers, in the latter part of that reading, that God is assuring Moses, I will be with you. You know, it wasn't easy or prophets in the Old Testament. Right? Many of them even say, why me, Lord? Go pick someone else. And yet each of us in our baptism is anointed as a prophet. Priest, prophet, and king. We like the priestly part, we like the king part, but uh -huh. the prophetic part is something that gets us in trouble doesn't win us a whole bunch of friends. And Moses knows this is going to be the challenge for him, to convince the Hebrews, the God of Isaac and Abraham and all of those leaders, is going to be a challenge. But God assures Moses, you are not alone. I will be with you all along the way. And in future readings from Exodus, we find out about all of these miraculous things that God does with the staff of Moses to get enough support. Just go away, Hebrews, is basically what ends up happening. Jesus in the Gospel passage reassures us of that. Because our scripture readings today are about our solidarity in our relationship with God and in our relationship with one another as members of the body of Christ. Now, I grew up as a kid in New York City. I didn't know what the hell a yoke was other than in the middle of my egg. But then we remember, as I grew older and wiser and got out of New York City, 
But I think as we look at this yoke, it's that wooden bar that goes over the necks of two oxen or cattle that are leading a carriage somewhere. That they move in unison with one another. They stay connected to their task. And then we also sometimes see, I don't know why it's always a woman and not as much a man all the time, but in certain parts of the world where a woman has that yoke on her shoulder and maybe two buckets of water underneath in some of our third world countries, bringing life and sustenance to family members. But we're not alone. And Paul the Apostle tells us that you are the body of Christ. You are the living presence of Jesus. And I think that's the challenge for us, is to always remember that. Yes, we have this Eucharistic revival because roughly 26% of Catholics do not understand what real presence is all about. That it truly becomes the presence of Christ sustaining us in our journey and we begin our day here. It's been wonderful to be a part of this faith community this, this week. But I think it's also about what St. John Paul II said, become what you receive. And that's the reassurance of Paul the Apostle that you are the body of Christ. You're the living presence of Jesus in the world. And when we are in solidarity with one another, rather than divided, just imagine the potential that we have. Moses was anxious about his role in calling the, pe the Hebrew people together in solidarity. But God assured him, I am with you. Jesus is assuring us today that you are never alone. And let us place before the Lord the prayers from our hearts and minds and those special needs that we have. For the church, may the Holy Spirit imbue her with compassion, gentleness, and humility. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who serve in governments throughout the world, may God give sight to their eyes to apprehend all that their people need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick or suffering in any way, may the healing and strength of our Lord Jesus Christ come upon them and give them comfort. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For each one of us in this community, may the yoke that Christ shares keep us steady on our road of discipleship. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died in faith, May they be crowned with glory of everlasting life in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Mr. and Mrs. Adam Narkavich and Mr. and Mrs. Horatio Pierce, for whom this Mass is offered. And for what or for whom do we pray for today? For my cousin Jim Huber, who died earlier this morning, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, 
hear our our prayer. prayer. Loving and compassionate Father, we gather as your people filled with much hope and much light in our hearts. It is in that spirit that we entrust all of these prayers and this day into your hands through Christ Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us our bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. As we receive us, we please with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Pray, sisters and brothers, that these our gifts may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look upon the offerings of the church, O Lord, that she makes her prayer to you, and grant that when consumed by those who believe, we may bring ever greater holiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time Jesus was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice. Once more, giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of Jesus' death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and William our Bishop and everyone who proclaims your gospel. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and especially for those that we prayed today and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, St. Elizabeth Ann, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may this peace, the peace of the risen Lord, be with all of you always. Amen. And let us joyously share some sign of this peace with one another. Lamb of God, Lord Jesus Christ, we pray for the Lord Jesus Christ, and we pray for the Lord Jesus Christ, and we pray for the Lord Jesus Christ, and we pray for the Lord Jesus Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the one who has taken away all of our sins, and happy are all of us who are now called by name to share in the supper of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be in the
Let us pray. Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may grow through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may God's blessing be upon all of us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Just a word of thanks first. It's just been a wonderful experience for me uh, to be among all of you these daily masses. And I ask you to continue to pray for me in my vocation as I will pray for each of you in yours. Let us go in the peace of Christ.